Hey guys, I want to show you a piece of a legacy and I'm here in the warehouse at the Phoebe Medical Building and I found this antique. It's a piece of history for medical equipment and it's also um, a legacy piece for the family, the Presbarella family that owns Phoebe. They have been in the medical industry for many years and it's been amazing seeing that legacy here because there's a lot of historic medical equipment there's um, stuff that we're moving around as we're modernizing the shop you can see some of it right here behind me the workbench and stuff we're putting in but i found such an awesome piece of medical technology here and i'm going to share that with you guys right now okay guys this is a cameron esu unit and it doesn't look like much because it's not much if you open it up and take a look inside. It's got a little rheostat right here and it's got a light fader control. You've got a ground electrode, an active electrode, and a monopolar or bipolar. It's, it's odd that they got these. And a little on off switch. And the on off switch seems to favor the on position. You see that? Well, the reason that this is so significant is because Cameron was one of the first manufacturers of electrosurgical units. And this unit here does not use any solid state components. From my estimate, from what I can see, this is probably from the 40s or 50s, 1940s or 1950s. My boss's father used to sell these for Cameron, and that's why we have it. So it's a unique opportunity, it's been preserved as well as it possibly could be and um, I seen it sitting in a windowsill and it's it's like displayed up front at the front office and I thought holy cow that is so cool guys in the bottom of it there's a little drawer now this type of ESU is normally used with uh, dental so that's why it it's obviously not very high wattage but it's very simple and it's very complete. This kit has way more stuff than I would normally assume. So we have what I assume is gonna be your ground electrode and it's unusual because each of the electrodes has got a different diameter. So I could technically put it in here. It's not like a modern day plug which would be a different pin configuration. So one might be three pins, one might be two, one might be a spaced pin configuration. But the old ones, they just use regular circle jacks, just like that, and they're different diameters. So here I have, uh, I believe this is monopolar or bipolar, and the only reason I'm saying that is because it's got the largest diameter and it seems to fit in there. Now these are all original, which is really amazing. So I'm being very delicate with them because I don't want to crack any of the insulation. And uh, this one here looks like it's the light. So this one's got an auxiliary light output in the back. And we have the power cord, the original power cord. Take a look at this Bakelite plug for the jack in the back. We'll take a look at that. This is before the IEC standard came out and manufacturers made a variety of different types of plugs and jacks. But it's very simple in its operation. You just turn up the power to whatever you want, and I would assume that maybe these two are shorted together to activate, or maybe it's active all the time, but uh, everything feels kind of good. Now, this rheostat in the middle, it actually has a wiper on a uh, coil in the back. It's like a transformer, and I'll let you take a look at that, but I don't want to move this guy very much because until I can get inside it, which there are no visible ways to really get inside it. Maybe from the bottom of the pan here, there's might be screws. I don't want to take it that far apart because it's extremely delicate. But the front of it is very simple. You can almost imagine this in a 1950s dental office. And then on the back, this is where that power jack is. You can see they did a dot. So line up the dots and it plugs in. You see that fantastic Bakelite? Non-standard jacks. 
So this would be, yeah, foot switch. So that's how it's activated. I don't have a foot switch with this unit, but right next to it is an auxiliary light. So that would be this cable. Very cool. And it's got some screw down so that it can be permanently attached. I wish I had the foot control. Probably wouldn't be too hard to find one. And then inside here, I already loosened up the screws so you guys can take a look. It is the vacuum tube. Check that bad boy out. You wanna talk about rare? I bet you it's very difficult to find a replacement for that. And you can also see on the inside, now this unit did not previously catch on fire or anything, but it's got some buildup. And see that transformer right there? They actually used a lacquer between all the different uh, layers and that lacquer sometimes eventually kind of boils off. And you can see right here, ozone and stuff just kind of builds up on the inside of the case. There was no ventilation inside this. And right back there, you can see that wiper. You can see the little wiper arm over to the right of the coil and you can see the actual coil itself. And that is how you adjusted the power output is the wiper would go across that coil. And as it went across the coil, it would basically hit more and more power. So a rheostat is kind of like a voltage divider and you can think of it like a giant resistor and what the wiper arm is doing is it's basically shortening or lengthening the resistor. So that's basically what's going on in there. What a fantastic piece of technology. Of course this guy should never ever be plugged in again is probably a fire waiting to happen. But as a museum piece, and as a historic piece for the family, since they are still very widely in the medical industry, this being in the front is so amazing. And I'm so happy that they gave me permission to take a look at it and do a video on it because uh, this Cameron ESU is a piece of medical history. And uh, I'm glad that we have it here in house. As a side note, I think some of you guys are probably wondering what's in the silver box. Well, with these early ESUs, you had replaceable electrodes that go inside the little tip. And look at these loop electrodes. How cool is that? As you can see, this one right here, really long. You got large loop. I assume that this one right here is a needle, which is why it's probably in a cork. You got a typical ESU type of tip that we normally see. Look at the different tips that come in it. They actually screw in. See that? They're threaded. Whereas a modern day one, it just presses in. We've come a long way, haven't we? Not too bad for a 50, 60 year old device. Maybe it's even 70 or 80 years old at this point. Thanks for watching, guys.